G'day. Whilst the majority of my videos are of a light-hearted nature, I thought I'd discuss with you a very serious topic. Now this is primarily I guess for guys, but it's not a bad thing for women to be aware of this as well, to tell their relatives, partners or friends, sometimes they're the same thing. So if you found this video, there's a good chance you're searching for PSA or prostate cancer. And congratulations if you have found the video because somehow I've managed to get up there and beat all the big channels. So this is primarily going to be my story and my experiences. So I'm afraid that mostly you're stuck with just looking at me. So maybe close your eyes if it's too much for you. Now PSA stands simply for, pro well not that simply, prostate specific antigen which is a component in the blood where doctors can search through blood tests if your levels are too high or excessively high. Now I must first of all say a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. This is based solely on my own experiences and research and believe me I do a lot of research into things that concern me. And this has really concerned me as I said in a recent video. I do have something else that's weighing very, very heavily on my mind. It's a health issue. That in due course, I'll update you either way about, but uh, hopefully with a positive outcome. But yeah, it plays in my mind and uh, keeps me awake at night. However, I'll get to this later. Don't rely on everything Google will tell you. I'll tell you a funny anecdote about that later if you're still here. So most of my research comes from well-known establishments such as John Hopkins University, etc. And there is a vast disagreement even amongst the medical fraternity on this topic. So I won't go too deeply into it, but let's first of all establish what is a prostate. You'd be surprised, I certainly have been, the amount of even men that don't know where the prostate is. I guess the best thing is to just show you. Just kidding. I'll show you a diagram. Now, this one's not to scale for me. Ah, oh, that's better. That's more scale for me. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so your prostate is not where a lot of people think, you know, down there in your block and tackle, whatever you want to call it. What? I've been frozen for 30 years. I've got to see if my bits and pieces are still working. Excuse me. My wedding tackle. I'm sorry. I'm... My meat and two veg, my twig and berries. Hello, lad. Oh, Mr. Powers, Mr. Powers, please. It actually sits below your bladder. Basically what can happen, can happen, as your prostate enlarges, is it squeezes on your urethra, or in other words, your, your pipes, as the urine is passing down. And a lot of men experience it, you know, difficulty in urination waking up several times a night to pee. Personally, I haven't found any of those symptoms, so I'm lucky. Uh, as the urologist said to me on the phone, no need for medication because you're not experiencing those problems. So that's good. So anyway, in Australia and I think the UK, the maximum baseline for PSA in numerical value is three. Curiously, in America, it's four. Now there are many variables on this and nothing, there's no one size fits all when it comes to this. Science generally doesn't definitively know why your PSA level may increase. So generally speaking, if you have a blood test, typically they'll start monitoring this in a routine blood test and I'm a big fan of annual blood tests at around the age 50. Personally, I think they should start it say the age 20 but there you have it there's a video i put up at the end that i made about why you should have no fear in having blood tests at all so you'll go along you'll have a psa test just part of a routine blood test and you'll go back to your referring doctor and then you'll be able to see you know if you're above or below that that threshold now in my case probably three years ago I started to go above that threshold. So what could this mean? Well, it could mean nothing at all. It could be an indicator that you have early stages of prostate cancer. It could also mean 
that you simply have an enlarged prostate, which they call benign prostate hyperplasia. In other words, your prostate just gets bigger. This is a normal thing as you age. Now I can tell you that just about every video you'll find, they'll say the prostate is about the size of a walnut. Well, I recently had an MRI, finally, because I first had this indication three years ago, but I didn't qualify for an MRI because they're quite expensive if you pay for them yourself. And my prostate is uh, about five centimeters or about two inches at its greatest length, which is a damn sight bigger than any walnut I've seen. Let's have a quick look inside me. Apparently this is a slightly enlarged prostate, but not overly large. To quote the urologist, larger than a young man. I had an ultrasound a couple of months before the MRI. Ultrasounds are okay, but they're nowhere near as accurate in their definition. It was all clear as well. Now, if it's not already obvious, I need to point out, women will never have this problem. It is a male-only thing. Women do not have a prostate gland. But it's important if you are a woman to share this video with males that you know or you know you can maybe harass them slightly to go along and get a PSA test because it can and not necessarily is but it can be a good indicator if there's anything starting to go amiss. Science also agrees from everything I've gleaned that once you turn 70 and above PSA tests are not very accurate anymore. Now it's likely that typically when you turn 50 your general practitioner as we call them or MD in America will want to do a digital examination and I use this finger for a reason. I think you can work out where I'm going with this. This was my surprise when I turned 50, you know, a few years ago, not that many. Yes, I went along for a routine consultation and he said, oh, you're 50 now, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, have you ever had a digital examination? I said, well, you know, a digital watch and no, no. Uh, yeah, so as you can imagine where that might end up, that was not something I was expecting. Now, I've known the doctor for 20 years or more. So when he did the prostate examination, I went back later for the follow-up next time. And I said to him, well, you know, he said, how are you going, Stephen? I said, well, you never write, you never send me flowers, give me chocolates. So we made a good joke of it. And that's all you can do. I mean, doctors are, you know, professional people. Try not to think about these things. Oh, somebody's, you know, Argh. yeah, it's just, the way it is. They do it all the time. There's no big deal to them. So try not to let it be a big deal to you. Just move on after it, you know. There's no problem. So you may find that's where it starts for you at around 50. And then the PSA test will be part of your regular examination. Now I'm not going to go deeply into what ifs. Uh, as my GP and uh, urologist have said, they've seen PSA levels extremely high and it turns out the man didn't have cancer. Consequently, they've seen really low PSA, well under the baseline, and they have had cancer. So, look, it's a tool that can be potentially used to detect early cancer. And early intervention is very important or can save your life in some instances and this of course doesn't just apply to prostate it applies everywhere to males and females i'm a huge advocate for blood tests i think you should do them every 12 months but that's up to you so if you're still watching thank you first of all i'll get into my story specifically because i'm just telling you as a man what i experienced so my PSA levels, as I said, started to increase, but in the later part of last year, I had my 12 monthly routine blood test with PSA, went along for the results, and my PSA level had jumped, well, nearly doubled in 12 months. Now, these can be caused by a number of things, infection, there's various things, okay, and just the fact that as you age, your prostate does get bigger and the PSA levels will typically get higher. Now, as I've tried to convey to you, this is not necessarily cause for alarm, but it warrants investigation. 
So my doctor made a referral to urology at a hospital and of course that's never a fast process, never has been, probably never will be. So thankfully I managed to follow it up because I checked with the hospital and they didn't receive the referral after over a month, so luckily I did. So fast forward a little bit, that went to triage and then triage obviously decided, well, it's a bit suspect, the guy of this age, you know, the levels are quite high. They went up to 5.6 and then they wanted another blood test for some reason a couple of weeks later and it had dropped to 5, which sounds all right. So just the other week I had an MRI, which I believed was the gold standard, which effectively looks through your body at the targeted area. Now, I do have the results and the images, and there's about 40 of them. <laughs> it turns out I'm quite good at reading uh, images, as I always seem to have been with other things like x-rays, whatever. So I made an appointment to see my normal doctor to get the results. I had them copied to him before my appointment that was made three weeks later at the urology clinic, which I end up doing by phone, and I'll tell you why. Went to see my GP. I'm trying to think positively all this time, like, you don't have cancer, there's nothing there. I'd seen the images, and to me, a layman, it was all clear. Thankfully, my GP confirmed, yes, all clear. So I rang up the hospital, made my appointment, a phone appointment instead, which I'm very glad I did, because that was just yesterday, and I waited until the results before I made this video. I waited for three hours, so... I would have been really annoyed if I had have gone and sat there for three hours in the clinic. So he confirmed the MRI results were all clear. He did say there's two camps usually men fall into. One camp, as he is quite happy to go along with, is just monitor. So in six months I'll have another blood test. We'll check the PSA levels. If it's significantly risen, then obviously I might look at a biopsy. The other camp is, as he says, some men elect to have a biopsy to check cellular structures. Even though there was nothing at all, as my report says in the MRI, there's no tumours, no lumps, uh, nothing like that. However, he didn't recommend it. He said, it's up to you. He's quite happy to just go with the PSA test. And to me, that sounds like a better decision because given there's nothing there, well, chances are there's nothing there. As he said, 95% of the time there is nothing there, even when they do a biopsy. I won't delve too deeply into this topic, but there are side effects potentially with biopsies, internal bleeding. You could end up with an infection and end up in hospital for a week. Other things like that. So you don't really want to... Well, I didn't choose to push it. Okay, If my PSA level is significantly increased... I'll reevaluate the situation. Now, if you're still watching, I will now tell you a funny little anecdote. And to be honest, to be frank, I'll, I was pissing myself all the way home laughing, not literally. Uh, because this is, okay, this is why. Don't believe everything on Google, not even on YouTube, but make sure your sources are pretty accurate on YouTube as well. So the morning of my MRI, it was to be in the afternoon. I started googling again what um, yeah, what's involved and all of the results came up with, I'll be frank with you, that during the MRI of the prostate they inserted what they call a coil into your anus and I thought, oh no, I didn't think they did. Fast forward a few hours later I get there, I'm prepped, they said, you know, you just change into a gown and whatever and it turns out I didn't need to had no metal on me, I took my earring out. So they did that, and the MRI itself, look, yes, they say it's noisy, and I guess it is. They put, ear, well, I put earplugs in and a headset, but you could still hear the, the sounds. Look, you know, it's not like a jet engine, but anyway. Also, Google says, oh, it takes 45 minutes to an hour. It was all over in 25 minutes. But the funny thing before that, I had to answer like a hundred questions, it seemed, from the head nurse. And even things like, um, do you have metallic eyelashes? And I went, I didn't even know that's a thing. She said, neither did I. 
So I lowered my voice. I said to her, is it true that you insert something into my anus for it? She said, I certainly hope not. And I went, phew. <laughs> so I don't know what she said. Maybe for a biopsy, they might. Anyway, I was pleased that uh, I didn't have to endure that. So it goes to show, don't believe everything Google is telling you, okay? There's no hard and fast rule to anything, but don't consult Dr. Google as the, the know-it-all because uh, results are just getting worse and worse with Google. That's cause for another video. So basically, yes, everyone's an individual. Prostate cancer can or can't be present. You don't know. Like everything else with the human body, we are all different. Family history can play a huge part, as it always does. There can be a number of other factors. But basically, science doesn't even agree on every aspect of it. Some of them do not even agree with the, the digital examination, whereas some doctors still like to do that, so it's up to you. Personally, I think that an MRI that's taking exact measurements can do a lot better than someone's finger. It's my opinion. <laughs> okay, so the basic point is get examined. If you're 50 and above, there's no problem with a blood test. It, there really isn't. And just keep an eye on things because early intervention can and often does save lives. I hope you found this video useful. Please share it to someone that you think may benefit. Cheers.